Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Once again, I'm here to do a round of recent reads talking about the horror I've read in the last few months. I have some great books to recommend and also one that I really didn't like. I don't think I've ranted in one of these videos in quite a while, but it's, it's time. I have problems with that book. That being said, let's get into the books themselves. First, let's talk about The Good, and I read The Wicked by James Newman. This is one I actually requested from Apex Books, and they sent me a digital copy because it's been on my radar for quite a while. I really thought I would enjoy it, and I'm glad I finally got around to checking it out. This book, as you can see from the amazing cover, is inspired by a lot of the kind of classic pulp horror of the 70s and 80s, those mass market paperbacks that are all about small towns with like supernatural secrets. And knowing that, I very much had low expectations going into this. Not that I thought it would be bad, but I expected this to be a cheesy, fun horror book with not a lot of substance. And I'm happy to say that I was so pleasantly surprised by the depth of this book. I thought I would like it, but I ended up really loving it. And this book follows a family that moves from New York to this small town after a traumatic incident where the wife was actually raped. And as a result of that incident, she became pregnant. And now the family is dealing with that and trying to move on. And there is a question of whether or not the pregnancy was caused by the rape or if it's actually her husband's child. And so you can see just from that premise that there is a lot of emotional layers built into the story, obviously triggers for people who are sensitive to that subject matter, although it's handled very well. And the rape is not described in any sort of graphic detail. You just know that it happened. And I just love this book. Within the story, the town that they go to does have this supernatural presence that has kind of taken hold of the town. And you know that this entity is basically coming after people's children. So I think especially this book will work really well for parents. It did so for me that it will really play into your feeling of wanting to protect your children or protect someone else's children. And certainly there is a large supernatural aspect to this book, but in a lot of ways, the creepiest parts of this book were more caused by realistic situations, which I personally really enjoy. I did think there were some very creepy moments in this book and I just found it so immersive. I just found myself like totally pulled into the story and I haven't had that with a horror book in a little while, just that level of immersion. So highly recommend this one. I think it was very well done and is well worth picking up. So I would give that one a big recommendation from me. Next, I read Thinner by Richard Bachman, who of course is Stephen King. And this is about a man who starts out the story overweight. He then gets cursed by a gypsy and starts to lose weight. At first it seems like a good thing, but soon enough the situation gets out of hand because he's losing more weight than he should too quickly. And he starts to eat giant meals, thousands of calories, and still can't keep the weight from shredding off and just falling off of him. And I really like this premise. As someone who has struggled at different times with being underweight myself, I find the idea of not being able to stop losing weight very scary. I don't know if this book would be as scary to someone who doesn't have that baggage around food and calories, but for me, I really enjoyed the setup. I thought the beginning of the story was very immersive. However, the middle of the story kind of slogged for me. I tend to complain that Stephen King needs to edit his books more. I felt like there was a lot in the story that didn't have to be there, a lot of filler. The ending was actually quite strong, which is great because sometimes endings, especially for Stephen King, can be kind of hit or miss. But but if I could change one thing, I would have made this a novella rather than a novel. It's not his longest novel, but it still would have been better as a shorter story. So I liked it, didn't love it, and I think if you're interested in that premise, it's still worth checking out. Okay, now I need to rant a little bit because I read I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lois Duncan, and I didn't love it. I have not actually watched the movie, so I can't compare. I really still want to watch the movie because I really like Freddie Prince Jr. But that was one I just kind of missed when I was a teenager myself. But of course, if you don't know, this is the story of a group of teenagers who start getting messages from a mysterious person saying, I know what you did last summer. And you find out very early on that the group of teenagers 
were responsible for the accidental death of a young boy and they decided not to report it and so it was a hit and run and they basically decided to keep this secret but obviously someone knows more than they should and is now going after them so a great premise for a story and this one almost read a little bit more like a suspense rather than a horror novel because it was more about the mystery of who that person was. At first, I thought it was mysterious, but it's pretty obvious who that person is if you're reading through the story. But my biggest complaint with the book is that I hated the characters. I hated the teenagers, I hated their parents, and I don't know if you're supposed to like them. I normally enjoy unlikable characters. I don't have a problem with that but I think we were supposed to like them, which is my complaint, because while they were getting these terrible messages and like their friends were in like dire situations, the teenagers kept being like, hmm, I wonder if I'd be prettier if I lost weight, or I wonder if so-and-so likes me. And I just did not care for all that teen drama. This book is the reason I don't read more young adult. I realize it's an older young adult and the new YA out there is so much better. But all the like teen angst, the useless parents, I hated them all, and the ending of the book just had the worst last line. I just wanted to puke when I was done, and just not for me. So apologies to anyone who loves this book. I realize that Lois Duncan is kind of a classic of the thriller and horror community when it comes to young adult literature, but this one was a big miss for me. I'd like to know if it's worth checking out some of her other books. Is this one of her weaker stories, or should I just steer away if I hated this one so much? I've kind of wanted to go back and, like I said, find out some of the roots of the genre, but this was a mistake. I hated the book so much. I haven't hated a book that I finished in quite a while. Usually I DNF it, but it was short enough that I read it the whole way through and just basically hate read it. So that happened. All right, rant done, let's move on. Now to briefly talk graphic novels, I read volume two of The Ice Cream Man. I actually talked about this horror graphic novel last year when I read the first volume and gave it a pretty mediocre review. But because it was available through my library on Hoopla, I did decide to check out the second volume and I'm really glad I did. This is a collection of horror short stories that are all very loosely interconnected by this creepy ice cream man. And I didn't love the first volume, but the second group of stories was really good. There was a few I didn't completely understand. They were just weird and abstract and I didn't fully get what was going on, but there were some really good stories. One of them is all about a person who gets a scoop of Neapolitan ice cream, which of course has three flavors in it. And then the story weaves together three narratives of what happened to this man, depending on which alternate reality was real and it's so good. So there was a couple of really strong stories in this collection. So even if you were like me and didn't love the first volume, check this one out. If you like the first volume even better, this is a case where the second is even better than the first and I definitely recommend that graphic novel. And finally, I have to recommend Gaio by Genji Ito. Yes, you're probably getting sick of me reading him, but I am obsessed and I'm still reading through his collection. This particular story is about a situation in Japan where these dead fish with weird robotic legs are walking out of the ocean into the land and because they're dead, there's this terrible smell and the story is about these creatures taking over. So it's partially about the horror of the smell, but largely so the horror surrounding the creature. So it very much plays into creature horror with a lot of good body horror, which you'll find in pretty much all of his work. And the artwork was so creepy. I loved it. I will say that, as you can probably guess in that premise, the setup for the story is so ridiculous. I did actually start it and stop because I thought this is so stupid. But then I started it again and I suspended my disbelief. I just said, let's go along with it. And I got so immersed into the story. I really enjoyed it. Definitely one of the strongest horror books I've read this year. I thought it was really fun and surprisingly scary. Like I said, you have to just go along with it. But if you can do that, if you're okay with this completely unrealistic situation, 
it just gets really creepy, really messed up, and kind of has that psychological aspect where it just like messes with your head. I can see why people are so obsessed with his collections because he just writes really weird situations and I love it. So he is definitely a new favorite horror author of mine. So yeah, cannot recommend that one enough. So that's it for this video. Before I go, please let me know in the comments whether or not you think I should continue on with Lois Duncan, if you agree or disagree with my unpopular opinions, and if you plan on picking up any of the books that I did recommend. Thank you as always for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.